Happy April Fool's Day, folks, and this is not a joke. Empty Arena Performance Center WrestleMania this coming weekend, WrestleMania 36. This is the go-home show, episode 331 of Hashtag Ask GSM, here today for Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. Graham GSM Matthews here, not flying solo, being joined for the first time, I believe, in a couple of months. Alexis, Alexis, welcome back to uh, Hashtag Ask GSM. Hi. Or should I say Hashtag Ask Alexis, as we put out at the uh, hashtag on Tuesday night. I love that. I love being a hashtag. So you're here back on the show for WrestleMania week. May not, you know, not the first time, probably won't be the last time. Your school schedule is different now, um, doing stuff from home during the week. So we have more yeah. opportunities to uh, have you on. So might be back next week, might be back next month. We'll see. You'll probably be back sooner rather than later. But we got a ton of questions to get to here today from a number of people from the Twitter machine. Before we even get to those, people can send in questions by tweeting me on the Twitter machine at WrestleRant with the hashtag AskGSM or Ask Alexis or whoever is fucking on the show that week. Um, <laughs> also on Facebook at Facebook.com backslash Graham.GSM.Matthews. Leave a comment on the post. I usually put up on Tuesday nights. And finally, down in the comment section on this very video, I'll include your question in next week's edition. So my first question for you, Alexis, is what are you mm-hmm. drinking right now? Because I can hear a cup in the background. Oh, it's an ice water. I'm sorry. It's all right. You know, we got to start off with a question here. So ice water works. Of course, people would rather <laughs> prefer you be here in person. But now that I have a new phone and the Feast Them audio app is fucking awesome quality wise. So it might even be better, honestly, than if you were here in person. Although I do love seeing you in person. So uh, maybe next I mean, time. yeah, I would prefer seeing you in person. So of out. course, maybe not. Maybe not. I take that back. <laughs> but this is quarantine edition. So it is fitting. First yes. question comes from none other than Mr. Marceau at RG underscore, Mar- underscore Marceau. Um, RJ's first question was, and I know he's going to make fun of me for messing up his username there. Which WrestleManias were better when you watched them back? I thoroughly enjoyed WrestleMania 34, rewatching it back more than live. So n- there are a few questions I will say that you can't really answer. Um, but that being said, cause you really haven't watched the live mania and, you know, watched the live mania and then gone back and watched it because the only mania we've seen together since you kind of started watching full time was Mania 35. So to kind of phrase this question for you, we did rewatch the main event of last year's mania. Now, being I mean, obviously, we're biased because we were there. We didn't watch it from home. Watching back that match from a different perspective, I believe both of our first times watching that match back in its entirety on the WWE Network slash USA Mm -hmm. Network, whatever. Did you enjoy that match more watching it back on Monday, the triple threat between Becky, Charlotte, and Ronda, than you did the first time we saw it a year ago when you were extremely exhausted because it was 1230 at night? Uh, No, I didn't. I I enjoyed it way more when I was actually there because I was saying to you when we watched it, I was like, that's Joan freaking Jet. Like, I was freaking out. Joan Jet was there live. Ronda Rousey was there live. I love those girls. They're awesome. Or those women, I guess. Um, And there's just something about being there live, like, no matter how tired I was. Like, I think, like, RJ went with us to the the TakeOver show that weekend, too. And I could not even remember any, anything from that TakeOver because I was so tired. Like, but I had a good time. Like, that was, that was a really fun night. But I don't remember shit because I was tired. But that being said, I had a good time. So that goes for this, too. But, like, watching it back here, it felt really weird. Like, it didn't feel like the same match. But I had a better time when I was actually there. Yeah, I think the takeover might be a better gauge of that because we haven't really... We haven't watched that back. I mean, I have. You haven't. But um, maybe that would be a better gauge of, like, whether it was better the second time around watching it than it was the first time around being there. Mm-hmm. Mania-wise, the match itself I thought was good. People were pooping all over it. They said it sucked. The botch, I will say this, though, watching that finish back, at the time we were like, okay, cool, Becky won, whatever. But, like, watching it back, I totally get the frustration because that looked absolutely terrible. Ronda yeah, Rousey's, I saw that, too. Ronda Rousey's was the, shoulder was like, her, her shoulder was like a million miles away from the mat. It wasn't even close. And I know the referee's view was obstructed. It wasn't intentional. It came The finish came completely out of nowhere. Her and uh, Ronda and Becky were only going at it, you know, one-on-one for a, maybe about a minute. Um, in the crowd, we were hot, like, when they first started going at it. And then she pinned her off the um, roll-up, whatever it was. 
and then uh, the kind of the fluky finish, and then the match was over. So um, it definitely looked a lot worse watching it back, but the match itself I thought was good. Mania's watching them back in full that were better than I remember. Mania 34, I rewatched the other day to review for yesterday here on the channel. Check it out if you haven't already. Cheap plug. Um, I thought that was a good show. Didn't love the show. I thought it kind of fell apart after the mixed tag team match with Rousey and Angle versus Stephanie and Triple H. That was an awesome match. Everything after that didn't even come close. Um, the undercard was solid, though. That being said, for other Manias, didn't have high expectations when I first watched Mania 22 and Mania 23 years ago. I thought those were pretty good shows. Far from my favorite, but they were two still solid shows. Um, manias that were better watching them back. 27, I honestly... I, it's a bad mania, but watching it back, I didn't want to, like, fucking... Ga you know, gauge my eyes out. Like, it wasn't that bad. Um, 29, though, at MetLife Stadium from six, seven years ago at this point. They had a main event of Rock and Cena, too. That show is every bit as bad watching it back as it was watching it the first time. That show sucked. Um, Mania 31, rewatched that here on YouTube for the watch along a couple days ago. Great show. 30 was good. There's very few shows, like, I'll go back and rewatch, and I would say, oh, wow, that was better the second time around. Like, a Mania 33 that I was at. Honestly, that might be one of those shows that I would rewatch and say to myself, wow, that wasn't as good the second time around just because I was there, so obviously my view is biased. Um, but, like, the main event wasn't good. Roman Reigns and Taker, and then Randy and Bray had a very bad match. And there were some cool moments and matches on the show, too, but it was far from a great, great mania. Um, 31, in my opinion, still stands as the best mania of the modern era. RJ's second question, what superstars WrestleMania losses have hurt their careers the most. So what he's kind of getting at here is he was texting me the other day, yesterday about this, about how, like, for example, they did AJ and Shinsuke for the WWE title two years ago. Shinsuke had all the momentum in the world. Like, the idea of Shinsuke at this point going for the WWE title is laughable because <laughs> the That's guy has been buried beyond belief. But two years ago, it was a big deal. People wanted to see it. The match was very underwhelming. And then he lost... And then he didn't win it at the next pay-per-view. He didn't win it at the pay-per-view after that. He didn't win the title at the pay-per-view after that. He came up short of winning the top title on pay-per-view maybe six times in the span of one year, which is completely ridiculous and solidified the, guy, uh, solidified the guy as a fucking loser. And he's had a few title reigns since then, but no one takes this guy seriously at all as like a main event talent. As a mid-card guy, maybe. Definitely not as a main event guy. So... I would say his loss hurt pretty bad. Asuka, you know, losing her streak on that same show, RJ and I were discussing. She has not been the same since either, but at least she was the SmackDown Women's Champion for a time. She's the current tag team champion. You can kind of make her out to be a serious threat again if you want her to be, although she's kind of a joke right now, in my opinion, as well as yours. Um, yeah, she's she's like a, she's a glorified... Um... Well, no, she, I, I always say to you, every time her and Kyrie Sane come out, they look like two little kids in Halloween costumes. Yeah, I like the Kabuki Warriors, but the whole, like, laughing thing is just so fucking annoying. And I know it's that's the so point. It's so stupid. I know that's the point, because they're heels, but it's like, I don't know, I don't, I don't, it doesn't make me want to boo them, it just makes me want to change the channel. Yeah. So, um, anyway, are there any WrestleMania losses, in your opinion, that, that you can, that you know of, or that we saw, or that we watched last year at WrestleMania, that you were thinking that person shouldn't have lost and they've been way worse off since then? Well, I'm surprised you didn't mention Bray Wyatt, though. I literally was thinking that as I was giving you the question, but I was going to wait to see if you said it. That's very obvious. Well, I... I, I mean, that's the first one that comes to mind. That. Yeah, that's like the most obvious thing that you think of. Like, I can't think of anybody... Um... No one from last year really comes to mind. Well... Well, I don't know. The only person I can think of oh, when you're talking actually, about... you know what? I do have an answer from last year, but go ahead. Okay, you scared me there. <laughs> um, <laughs> the only person I can think of, but he didn't have a loss. I don't think he did. Um, it, in fact, he won the Battle Royal was Braun Strowman. Oh, but actually, that's yeah. Because, yeah, that's, that's because, like, yeah. But, like, he was already on the way down way before that, like, with... Crown yeah, yeah, exactly. It is a good but example, though. I for, I come totally forgot about that guy. I literally cannot remember any like. Well, Ronda Rousey, you can't count because she left. 
Um, I think winning the Battle Royal is even worse than losing at WrestleMania because that Battle Royal means absolutely nothing. And Carmella. Carmella's been literally nothing since um, then. Mm. Except for the 24-7 bullshit. Yeah, no, but I mean, it's not like... She was a SmackDown Women's Champion a couple years ago, and then she lost the belt to like Charlotte or Becky or whatever. Mm-hmm. So she was already kind of on the on the on the you know, on the downswing. She wasn't like in a top title match. But I I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. The, the women's one isn't that big of a deal. The men's one is literally like you can plug anyone into that thing, and whoever wins it, it's like it's cursed. Cesaro won it the first one. Um, they gave him a push for a cup of coffee, and they completely again another guy a lot like Nakamura that went completely downhill after that. They had. Big show in it the next year. I mean, the less said about that, the better. Um, the year after that, they had, I think, Corbin win it in his debut, which was cool. I mean, the guy is... I mean, mm-hmm. he's done a lot, actually. He's probably the best one-off who's won it. Um, they had... Yeah. God, who won it? Uh, Mojo Raleigh. I mean, come on, dude. Mojo fucking Raleigh. Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy did win it, and he won the tag titles with Bray after that, but it's not like it was a long-term push. I mean, they dropped the belts to the fucking B team like a month or two later, and the guy was off TV go, for like go, a while. Go. Jesus Christ. I, I still um, can't believe they did that. So. Wait, isn't there a Bo- Bobby Lashley? Would Bobby Lashley count, maybe? What, from last year? Yeah, like, or was he still on TV? When did he No, get um, he wasn't way worse off. Well, he hasn't really, I mean, he hasn't done anything in the last year except for the Rusa bullshit. So, yeah, he was intercontinental yeah. champion going into that show, lost it to Finn Balor. They were already kind of up and down on his push anyway. It's not like he had all this momentum because, like, they did the Leo uh, the Leo Rush thing, and that had promise, and they fucking butchered it. And um, he was smacking his ass at that point. So he wasn't... That is a good one, though. That is a good example because he wasn't, like, a top-tier, like, world champion guy. But he did have... He had way more momentum than he has right now. Right now, he is as fucking cool as an ice cube. <laughs> well, well, who were you going to say? You're going to be like, ah, I didn't, I can't believe I, I didn't think of that. And you probably totally forgot the match existed. This person, though, way worse off. Bray Wyatt, first of all, number one. Way worse off. I can't believe they did that. Dumb decision. Rusev being another one from the year following. He went in that mania. I watched it the other day for WrestleMania 31. I watched it on a Sunday. Five-year anniversary. So he lost to Cena. He was undefeated for a year. You know, he was United States champion. Came in in a fucking tank. And then he lost, and then he was never the same after that. So I would put him in that category, Sting being another one. Not that he had all this momentum, but that that was like, that didn't kill his career, but him losing to Triple H that year was just dumb. Like, how do you have the guy losing his debut match? Like, that's so stupid. But um, anyway, so the one I was thinking of, you're going to be like, oh, God, I can't believe I didn't think of this. Guess who it is? It, did someone, it, was it somebody that had the match in uh, WrestleMania? Yeah, it was a match at WrestleMania. 35? You probably, you're probably definitely not thinking of it. Yeah, WrestleMania 35, and they were definitely way worse after that. I, I can't believe... I mean, I can believe that you didn't think of it, because the match was... It was all right, but... Was it in the beginning or the end? It was in, like, the middle, I think. It wasn't, like, a super important match, and it wasn't on the kickoff show, either. I'm thinking, like, Drew and Roman... Yeah, not AJ? Drew. Drew is fine. Yeah, not AJ and Orton. AJ not AJ was... and Orton. Not Batista and Triple H, obviously. No, but um, it was one of those type of matches. It wasn't a title match. It was like one of those middle grudge matches. You're on the right track. Can you think Kurt of Kurt Angle and uh, No, not Corbin. that one. Can you, you think him? of who else had a match? I'm actually surprised you remember that most of the card, but um, did. Shinsuke and Rusev have a match? Or what about the women's tag title match? No, you said it's not a tag title match. No, it wasn't. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Uh, Nakamura and Rusev were in the were a tag team at that point, which is random. Yeah, that was random. <laughs> um, I I don't know. I can't remember. All right, you want me to tell you? Yeah. The fucking Miz. Oh, my God! That's right! The Miz had all that momentum going Whoa. into WrestleMania. For the match with Shane, falls count anywhere, and he yeah. lost. And it's like, okay, he lost, dumb decision, but mm-hmm. you know he'll he'll win the rematch, loses the rematch that which we were also there for. I'm like, okay, this guy is dead and buried. And then they did another rematch on TV on SmackDown after that, and he lost that too. I I can't believe I forgot that whole Shane McMahon thing because when I tell you that pissed me off so much, like to no end. I would get like a headache over just watching the whole angle play out because they 
like this company doesn't know when to like stop doing things. Like, by the way, did you know that WrestleMania is too big for just one night? Oh, we'll get to I, that. We will get to that. that. I didn't know um, that either, actually. <laughs> they overdo things. Like they overdid that, and then and it was a good view that, too. He was, he was dead in the water. He was ruined. And now now he's doing the tag stuff, which isn't bad, but like their tag team title, their tag title, their tag team division, my God, is such a joke now. It's not even worth it for him. Well, I mean, it's better than what he was doing before. I mean, that feud was actually yeah, really good going into WrestleMania because we were at one of the final SmackDowns before Mania at Mohegan Sun, and he was really, really popular. Uh-huh. And uh, he beat up a bunch of people. I just remember him being very popular on that show. And then going into Mania 2, people were super, you know, hot for him. And then they just squandered it. Like, what are you doing? And then Shane was on TV for literally another six months after that. Like, they don't know when to, you know, enough is enough. No, like, I will give AEW some credit because, like, the Nightmare Collective stuff was so bad. It was so awful. And then... Like, at the beginning, it wasn't that bad, but, like, they were they were doing all these, like, heel factions and stuff. It, it just didn't make any sense. I was like, okay, that's too much. And then they heard nobody liked it, and then Brandy was like, all right, we're just going to stop because it's not working and whatever. And they stopped it immediately. Mm-hmm. WWE doesn't know when to stop. Like, just stop. Like, take Shane off TV. Yeah, I'm glad Shane has. I mean, I like Shane, but I'm glad he hasn't been on the show for a number of months, and hopefully it's a lot longer than what it is. He's been off the show now for about six months, which is very impressive, because I thought they would Wait, bring him. Wait, it's been six months already? Yeah, he got booted. His last match was the match was the match with Owens on the first SmackDown on Fox, that ladder match, and if he lost, he'd be gone, and he lost. And, um, I mean, but just because they say that, they do that all the time. Like, oh, if you lose, you don't come back. And they're back like a week later. Like that never actually oh, means yeah, anything, but he actually has mm-hmm. taken time off, which is cool. Like I wouldn't mind if he was brought back 10 years from now or something. I mean, I joke, but like at some other point I wouldn't mind it, but I'm glad they haven't like brought him back for a WrestleMania match again or some other dumb shit like that. And the Miz never got his win back either. He never beat no. Shane, which no, is even that, worse. That's... That's even more frustrating as a viewer. It's like, I really enjoy him as a person and a wrestler and a personality. And to, like, to root for him for so long, like, like you can do the whole, oh, he he won't get the win over the bad guy, like, oh, curses or some, some stupid shit like that. <laughs> but you eventually have to have him win. Like, you have to give the fans the satisfaction because that's... That's why we watch is to be, like, satisfied and be like, okay, that was cooler. I wasn't expecting that. Like... It's just ridiculous how they would go. They went on with that for like a full year. Like, mm-hmm. come on! It's so bad. Yeah. And it just people were saying, "Oh, the Miz is gonna get that win back," and he never did. So shut the mm-hmm. hell up. You know what I mean? Anyway, next mm-hmm. question from uh, at the Wrestle Guy Sal. Um, his first question was: If WWE can get The Rock to commit to one final match at WrestleMania 37. Do you think he should be booked to face Roman Reigns and enter the Hall of Fame? Hollywood seems like the perfect place for all of this. Ooh. Um, I have said, I've gone on the record, there is audio of me discussing this from literally five or six years ago. I think it was after... So The Rock's last like real match was actually seven years ago. It's been that long, which is like about the amount of time when he left the first time to go to Hollywood, and then he came back for the whole thing with Cena about a decade ago. He was gone for about seven or eight years. He's been gone again for about seven or eight years. He's made a few appearances. Um, he was at that SmackDown on Fox, that aforementioned SmackDown on Fox. Um, I don't think he'd been on the show before that since like Mania 32, which was three years or four years ago at this point. And... Um, on that show, he faced Eric Rowan, beat him in six seconds, which was a you know fucking joke. So that technically, Eric <laughs> Rowan technically has his last match ever, which is dumb. But the guy's got to wrestle one more match, in my opinion. He did say late last year that he was quietly retired from the ring. I'm hoping that you know he can come back for one more match anyway. Um, to kind of uh, you know whatever, kind of just close that chapter out on the right note. I have always said Roman Reigns would be the perfect final opponent for the guy and people don't like it people would boo that idea you know they'll boo Roman Reigns and obviously it would it would basically turn Roman heel because how could you boo the rock you can't mm-hmm. so like I don't know it didn't it didn't stop them from having them have Roman beat Undertaker at Wrestlemania when it, you know whatever people didn't want to see that and they did it anyway so honestly what the why the fuck not I, I don't see the issue with that at all I would love to see that um I don't think you could put rock in the Hall of Fame that same weekend I mean it would be cool but the issue with that is, like, it kind of makes it obvious that he won't win. 
Um, so I would save it for the following week. And like Batista, for example, he didn't go into the Hall of Fame last year. He lost. He had his retirement match. He lost. And now he's going in this year. Like that to me makes way more sense. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I would love to see that. I don't think they will do that. I mean, I've been pitching a rock return for years now. I do think he is done, unfortunately. I'm not 100% certain of that. But I feel like if he was going to come back for one more match, the guy's not getting any younger. He's only getting busier in Hollywood. So I feel like if it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. But I do like the idea. Hollywood would, would be the perfect place for it. Uh, they could bring back Hollywood Rock when he was a heel about you know, 15, 20 years ago, whatever. And uh, yeah, I would love to see it. So any interest on your end, Alexis, to see Roman Reigns and The Rock at WrestleMania next year in Hollywood? Well, first of all, Sal, hi, how are you? I know who you are now. <laughs> after um, we went to Raw, <laughs> after we witnessed yeah. the, uh, he, he was our uh, he was our buddy for the Ilana and Rusev wedding. Yeah, that's right, he was. Um, that's a good idea, though. I actually like that. But I think if he didn't want to wrestle either, like if he was just not into wrestling, but he wanted to be there, he could even host it. Or he could almost like do some sort of creative appearance there do like i like i don't know i think he could do that if he wanted to but i i think he needs to be involved somehow just because it's like it's a it's a hollywood like come on it's hollywood come on buddy yeah um yeah who doesn't love the rock like i would vote for the guy for president come on rock for president i love him um i think the idea of him facing roman reigns is really cool i i would love that I think people who don't watch wrestling would would tune into that just because that sounds like like everybody knows Roman Reigns, everyone knows The Rock, like mm-hmm. like I think people would tune into that. But um, yeah, I don't think, but but I do think if they were to do that, like WrestleMania season, like around that time, um, and you're saying, oh, they shouldn't do it at WrestleMania if they're going to put him in the Hall of Fame that that same weekend. Um, they have to put him in the Hall of Fame in the, in Hollywood. I mean, it's The Rock. Like, I mean, they can, the yeah. They they but, could just they could go into it saying, you know, this is my final match, and obviously, I guess you would have to lose. But um, no, but I'm saying he could he could do the match with Roman maybe the next week or I don't know, so, or the week before. I or probably it would have to be the week after, but like maybe for a post um, WrestleMania or wait, what is it called? Post WrestleMania SmackDown. Yeah, that could work. I mean, they usually do it before, but I see your point. Um, what was it? Well, isn't, say? aren't the shows after WrestleMania where all like this crazy shit happens? They could do it after. Um, yeah, I know, but the Hall of Fame. WrestleMania SmackDown. Yeah, I know, but the Hall of Fame is usually. I mean, they could announce it on that show for the following year, but the no, Hall... I'm saying no. They could have the match between those two on that show. Oh, they could in... yeah, they could do the Hall of Fame. Whenever they do the Hall of Fame before, no, before yeah, WrestleMania. I, would, I mean, I would do it at WrestleMania. I mean, I, I don't think The Rock would wrestle on free TV. The Brock has been back for eight years now. He's only wrestled one match on TV. That was the eight-second match with Kofi. Um, I would do it at Mania, but I don't I don't hate the Wait, idea. Wait, what? Brock? Remember the Kofi match on SmackDown last oh, year? Oh, Brock. I thought you said The Rock. No, like, What are no, you no. talking about? Man, Rock and Kofi wouldn't be bad either. Um... That would be good. I would like, Wait, you no. know, Kofi, yeah. you would, Kofi would be killed. That's uh, what a joke. After already being, he would he, instead of losing in seven seconds, he would lose in like four or five. Like Eric he Roman, Eric Roman won. lost in six seconds, so they can they can fight for that record if they want to. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I would rather see that personally. I know they would bring in a lot of um, outside interest if it was like The Rock and someone that people already know, someone like, you know, Triple H. Like I don't know. I feel like. I don't really want to... I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea, but my mindset is that if you're going to have your last match, it might as well be to someone that you're going to that you're gonna put over and that it's going to be someone that's going to be here. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. If The Rock comes in and faces Triple H, is Triple H going to win? Is Rock going to win? I feel like no one really benefits from that. Whereas if you bring in Roman and there's an actual history there with the two being cousins, obviously, it makes sense. So Are they I literal would, cousins? They're, they're actual cousins, yes. Like... They're, Straight up, like, first cousins? Oh, I don't know if they're first cousins, but I I forget the Samoan family tree, but they're definitely related somehow. Um, Okay. I I, I like the match. I don't know who else you would have it be to. I mean, I know they were going to... The same mania where they they were... They had Brock break the streak at WrestleMania 30. The only reason that happened was because the original plan of Brock versus The Rock fell through. 
So it oh. was almost Brock and Rock. They already did Brock and Rock a long time ago when Brock first won the title in like 2002. He beat The Rock already. But it would have been the rematch. I think Rock probably would have won. I don't know. He probably would have. Um, but they didn't do it. Rock got hurt or something. He got busy. He didn't do the show. He was at the show. He just didn't wrestle. And I feel like he's been at so many manias now. I mean, before your time. But after that Cena match years ago, he was at WrestleMania 33. He encountered Stone Cold Steve Austin and Hulk Hogan. An amazing segment. He was at Mania 31 when he confronted the authority with Ronda Rousey. Really cool moment. He was at Mania the following year when he um, did the Eric Rowan thing. And he actually hosted, quote-unquote, that WrestleMania. So they've already had him host one or two times already, which is why I would not I would actually have him have a match. But, you know, rock a rock appearance is better than no rock. So if they had to have him host it again, I mean, I wouldn't complain. Um, so, yeah, I, w- I would love to see that. But uh, Sal's second question, do you think Austin Theory should be booked as the next big thing in WWE? He's only 22, looks the part, and is very talented. If booked right in a few years' time, I believe he could take that leading role when it's time for Reigns to take the back seat. High praise there for Austin Theory from Sal. Um, do I think he can be the next guy? No. But that's partly because we haven't really seen enough of him. The guy's literally only been around for a cup of coffee. He just debuted on NXT maybe a month or two ago. Um, I think he was on that Christmas episode when he faced Roderick Strong for the North American title. Other than that, I haven't seen a a, a hell of a whole lot of him. But he is very good, I will say that. He is young, he's got a good look. He can talk. The issue is that, and I kind of agree with the masses here, he doesn't really have much of a character right now. A lot of people are calling him generic. He looks like one of those creative wrestlers in the video games. And I agree, he does. But I think it's because he really hasn't been given a reason to really establish himself. Like, Dijak, Dijakovic, whatever, was on TV before he became Dominic Dijakovic. Mm-hmm. They didn't. They just called him Chris Dijak. He was a cool guy, big oh. dude, who did some flippity doo dahs He faced Ricochet on one episode. He faced fucking Velveteen Dream on one show. And then he came out as Dijakovic like six months later. Um, Austin Theory has made way more appearances on the show than Dijak was at that point. He's he's. I feel like Austin Theory isn't one of those people they're just bringing in to lose, and they're going to repackage him in a couple months. I mean, the weird thing to me is that they're giving him this push, but then he goes in there and loses to Tyler Breeze. Like, loses to Tyler Breeze, but he shows up on Raw the following week for a Raw tag team title match. Doesn't really make yeah, much sense. That didn't make any sense. It was bizarre, but it was cool to see him. It's awesome, like being told, "Hey, dude, you just showed up in NXT this week. You're making your Raw debut, and the week after that, you're wrestling a WrestleMania." Like, that's fucking nuts. Like, there's people that were in the company for 10 years and never had a WrestleMania match. And granted, it's not in front of 80,000 people. And I'm sure Austin Theory would not have been their first option if this was in front of a bigger stadium, of of course. Um, But it is cool for him. Um, And, uh, yeah. So to answer his question, do I think he could be the next big thing? Not, Not the guy. I don't ever see him being, like, in a Roman Reigns type spot where he's like... The, like an like a Randy Orton. Randy Orton was 24 years old when he won the world title for the first time. I don't see him... I mean, he is great. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's that good, but we also don't know too much about him. So time will tell. But I do think he has a lot of potential, and I do think he's very good. So your thoughts, Alexis, on his assessment that Austin Theory might be the next big thing in WWE? Well, I will I will ask you before, because I was already thinking when you were talking, who do you, who do you think then? could be in somewhat of that spot. I mean, it's hard to say. I hate answering that question just because there's so many people. I'm, I am I can tell you right now, there's so many people that could be that guy. Like, for That are exa- older. Yeah, I know, I, know, I know what you're saying. Well, not just older, but like, look, I, and I, I've said this before. You can take anybody, for the most part, you can take anyone and make them the guy. Because they pick and choose who they want to push. Mm-hmm. For example, not a great example, but like if they wanted to make Jinder Mahal the face of the company, they couldn't. They can't. They absolutely could if they wanted to. Like they could do whatever they want. They can make Bo Dallas the face of the company. But um, I mean, the people wouldn't like it. But they, a lot of people don't like Roman Reigns, so it makes sense. So they can really put anyone in that spot. It's not a matter of whether they can. Anyone can. Fucking. Um, Keith Lee can be that guy. I think Keith Lee can be a big star for years to come. Adam Cole can be that guy. I think he has top tier talent written all over him. Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley, Velveteen Dream is great. Um, I think um, you know Ricochet could have been that guy, and they kind of butchered him. So I mean, like th- yeah. that, it could be anyone. 
you know? Well, Ricochet doesn't really add that much of personality No, to he it, doesn't. Sorry. He can't talk for shit. But he could be a way bigger <laughs> deal than he is right now. Easily. Um, I think somebody they really could make, like, a very top guy is Angel Garza. Yeah, no, easily. I mean, I hate to... I mean, not that I hate to say this, but... I mean, a lot of people have said this comparison, but he reminds me a lot of Eddie Guerrero and that he can be a good guy and a bad guy. We haven't seen a lot of him as a good guy, but um, he was doing that for a little bit in NXT. Um, but anyway, yeah, he's a guy I could see them going really, really far with because he is great. And so far, so good. They've handled him very well. Yeah, but I... I mean, Austin Theory, I don't really, like, eh, I don't really care about him, just because I haven't gotten a reason to care about him that much. No one has. But, yeah, like, I'm I'm very happy for him, because he's literally, like, two years older than me, and two years younger than you, and he's, like, out there doing the damn thing. Like, good for him, and he has a WrestleMania match. Like, that's really awesome. Mm-hmm. But it it's like, it's like the school plays I used to do in high school like it's up to the director like what everybody does it's up to the role like if i don't get a if i don't get a main lead in a play it's not because i wasn't good enough it's because the director didn't want me to be the lead you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so the same can be said for wrestling yeah they, they could put austin theory in that spot if they wanted to i don't think they will i think they're high enough on him where they see him as a potential prospect for years down the road why they would have him lose to tyler breeze i don't know and yeah, i like tyler no breeze sense. but that was that was bizarre um mm-hmm. but yeah i know i think he can go far i don't know if he's the next guy i don't know if he's the next big thing essentially but i think he can go far in wwe mm-hmm. um his next question here did you know WrestleMania is too big for just one night? LOL, but which match steals the show? So, two-parter question here, Alexis. Did you know that WrestleMania 36 is too big for just one night? Well, you know, I forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me. I may have to be reminded in another five minutes. Sal, if you could tweet us after this video is over, just letting us know that WrestleMania is still too big for just one night, I'd appreciate it because I probably will have forgotten by then. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. But, uh, yeah, so we, we do know that. The second part of his question was, let's see, which match steals the show on Sunday? It's hard to say because there's no crowd, and that kind of dictates what, ma- what match steals the show. When there's no audience, it's kind of hard. It's kind of a hard, it, it's hard to find a barometer for that because, like, how do you know which match steals the show if there's no audience to react to it? Um, I do think Edge and Orton is up there. I mean, that's been the best storyline hands down in the entire company since WrestleMania, the road to WrestleMania started. So, Mm -hmm. probably that one. From an in-ring standpoint, aside from Edge and Orton, um, I mean, Ripley and Charlotte can be a really, really good match. Yeah, that's the first one that came to mind when I thought of it. Maybe that's just because I wish Rhea Ripley and I were, like, best friends, but... Oh, goodness. (laughs) I love her. I'm so excited for that match. Edge and Orton, I think, is probably going to be a show stealer. If I had to say one. Those two, I think, before it was likely changed. Not that there was a ton of meaning to the match. It was really kind of <clears throat> kind of made out of nowhere. But the triple threat ladder match, the tag team ladder match, for the SmackDown tag titles on paper sounds amazing. But I heard the Miz got sick, couldn't compete. Probably had to get changed. Um, again, there's no crowd there, so it won't be the same. But that was another match I was really looking forward to. I'm trying to think of anything else on the card that I think would be like... AJ, I mean, AJ and Taker will probably be, like, in a different environment. So, I don't know if it's going to steal the show, essentially, or, like, Fiend and Wyatt, or uh, Fiend and Cena. Um, I'm trying to, there's so many matches. I'm sure there's more than what I'm just thinking. I, mean, I think Brian and Sammy could have a really good match. I don't think it's going to be booked to be a good match. I think it's going to be more about Brian trying to get his hands on Sammy, and Sammy just, like, retaining the title on the fucking, like, roll-up or something. So yeah. I don't really think it's going to be like a, 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 a an instant Matt classic. But um, yeah, if I had to say two matches off the top of my head, Edge and Orton and Ripley and Flair. Um, at, or go ahead. Um, well, I was going to say, you forgot about Brock and Drew. Oh yeah, I think Brock and Drew can be a banger too. Again, it depends on how it's booked and Brock just not doing fucking suplexes for five minutes before he beats him. Hopefully not. Um, but yeah, that, that I could see either being really, really good or really, really boring. So I really hope it's not boring because these guys have built up a great storyline too. So I hope not, mm-hmm. you know, um, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the whole show. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, it's in an empty arena. Yeah, it doesn't feel like WrestleMania. Listen, I saw the same shit last year. I saw the same shit before. I saw the same shit the year before that and the year before that empty arena. It doesn't matter. Full stadium. 
people just, I don't know. I, I understand the product isn't always amazing, but like just because it's an empty arena, obviously that hurts the specialness of the show. I totally get it. <clears throat> but like at the same time, people were complaining about this shit a year ago. I'm not looking forward to WrestleMania because it's not The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin for the upteenth time. Get the fuck over it. Like, I'm not saying you have to be excited for the show, but, like, this is what we have to be excited for. So, I'm not saying be excited for it, but, like, it's WrestleMania. It's hard to not be excited for but that's just me. Um, well, that's that's because um, they don't have any... Like, you've, you've already talked about this before. They don't have any rocks of the new era or stone colds of the new era. They're they're just recycling the same people from, like, the 90s and the early 2000s. So they don't have anybody of true and utter star power, um, at least that that they treat them like. Like like Roman Reigns, they treat him like that. I, I don't see him like that. Some other people do, but they only have, like... You know Becky Lynch. They have they had Kofi Kingston. They had um, like Daniel Bryan, but they don't treat them like like they should. Like they don't push them to make new stars and new future um, legends. Yeah, no, but I mean that's their own fault for not creating new mm-hmm. stars. I mean, I mean again, we've been over this a million times before about how yeah. you know they 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 need to create new stars and stuff like that, and it's definitely an issue. But uh, still, I think they've built up a good enough card where I think this could be an entertaining show. I'm not saying it will be good. I'm not saying it's going to be shit either. It could very well go either way. They can make this as good as they want it to be. If they want to put in the effort and make it a good show, hey, listen, Dynamite had an empty arena show a couple weeks ago, and it was one of the best episodes they've ever done. So if the effort's there, they can make this a good show. I'll I'll just say that much, regardless Mm -hmm. of what the situation is or the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Next question from Iwagu91. Their first question was, your thoughts on AEW's new championship called the TNT Championship and who should be the inaugural champion? Um, Alexis, you want to start this one off? Oh, yes, please. Um, well, wait, who starts the tournament? Was it Who is it again, Cody? The rest of the brackets being revealed tonight on Dynamite, but the fir- there's eight people. So there's four matches in the first round. The two matches that we know of so far are Cody and Sean Spears. And then Darby Allen and Sammy Guevara both being pay-per-view rematches from Revolution and All Out, respectively. Um, I think Darby should be the first champion. I think that's perfect. Um, I think he has a lot of momentum right now. No matter if there's not an audience to watch, um, I think he's still really, really, really popular, really hot. I think he deserves it. I'm trying to think. I don't know if Darby and Sam... Mm. Fuck. I'm trying to think, like, if, I think the same, I think those two matches I just mentioned are on the same side of the bracket, because I think it'd be cool if you got to the finals and it was Cody and Darby again, because they've had a number of matches, uh, in that building actually, in Daly's place, which is, let's face it, it's probably where double or nothing's going to be, they've had two matches already, one was a draw, and the other one Cody won, Darby Allen has never beaten Cody. Some of his best matches have been with Cody. Mm-hmm. I think it would be cool if you get to the finals and Darby beats Cody. Because Cody almost never loses. He's only been beaten by Jericho and MJF in singles competition, if I recall correctly. So it would be a pretty big deal if Darby beat him to win it. Unfortunately, I don't think that can be the final because they're on the same side of the bracket. So if that match was going to happen, and I think it probably will. I mean, I guess Sammy Guevara could beat Darby. I love Sammy, but, like, I don't know. I think Darby should go all the way. The guy's really popular right now. And, I mean, I, 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 know, there's, I know there's no crowds, but I think Darby Allen is the perfect person for that spot. Sammy would be cool, too, but you know if Sammy advances, he's just losing to Cody. So, mm-hmm. I would love to see it be Darby. And we don't know who the rest of the bracket's going to consist of, but I think Cody or Darby are probably the two best bets because Cody can't challenge for the world championship for now, anyway, as far as we know. And Darby is, you know, it would make sense for him to win it at some point. And then Darby is just really, he's really hot right now. He's got a lot of momentum. So I could see either one winning it. I would like for it to be Darby. Part of me feels like since Darby beat Sammy at Revolution, that Sammy's going to beat Darby now. And it's going to be Sammy and Cody in a rematch from that first episode of Dynamite when they faced off in the first match ever on Dynamite's history. And then Mm -hmm. Cody wins that, and then Cody goes down to the finals to face whoever. So we'll, we'll we'll get a better idea tonight when we see the rest of the brackets. But I do like the idea of the title. I mean, I've been saying this for... I, I get so many questions on the show about, oh, what about a secondary title for uh, AEW? 
I mean, I think it was only inevitable. You thought it was already going to happen anyway. So, I mean, this really wasn't yeah. much of a surprise. Um, but I love the idea. I'm glad they're doing it. It gives a title to people like Sammy and Sean Spears and Darby and not really Cody because Cody can fight for the world title any day he wants. But, um, you know, people like that, they don't really have much to fight for right now. So I like the idea a lot. Uh, your thoughts on the title, Alexis, and the TNT name? I think that's cool. Um, yeah, I think it's cool. I mean, I think they could have maybe put a little bit more creativity in in the name. But, I mean, it's a secondary title, so... I'm not complaining, but I, I'm excited to see what happens. It's better than... I mean, I think a TV title would have been cool, too, but we already have a bunch of TV titles. They already have the one in Ring of Honor and other companies, so... <clears throat> and, you know, obviously... Yeah, I know, NWA but they could have, like, totally gone out of the box with this name, or... I, I don't know. But, it's again, it's it's something for us to watch, and it's something new, so I'm not complaining. And I like the idea. I'm hoping it's just a regular title. I mean, if it's defended on TV, then that's cool. Um, and they were talking about a totally different concept, and I'm like, you don't need to reinvent the wheel here. Like, you don't need to have rounds. Like, that shit just does nothing for me. Like, just give me a secondary title. That's all we really need right now. Um, mm-hmm. There was some other dumb name that I heard someone bring up. I like TNT. It was way better than whatever I heard before. It was like... Something ridiculous. The dream title would work too, in honor of Dusty Rhodes. I don't yeah, know, I, I think, like that. I like that, but I think TNT is just as cool because if it's not a TV title, it might as well be the name of the station that they're on. So hopefully TNT never kicks them off the air, and they'll have to rename the uh, championship. But for now, I think it's a cool name. They'll um, call it like the the sci-fi title. They'll call it yeah the sci-fi title or the YouTube title. If they get booted to YouTube like the NWA, um, <laughs> which is funny because they have a TV title but they're not on TV. But that's besides the point. Um, his second question, did you know that Paul Heyman, plan- uh, this isn't really for you, this is more so for me, but he said, did you know that Paul Heyman planned to bring in low key to the original ECW before changing his mind due to the promotion coming to an end? So low key known as Caval in, in WWE, he was only there for about a year. He was a part of the second season of NXT and won it. They did absolutely nothing with the guy. Um, he went to Impact and a few other promotions. He was another. He was in like Ring of Honor and Impact before that, I think. But then he went on to WWE um, as Caval failed, whatever. Not really his fault, but I heard he had an attitude issue. I did not know that he was supposed to be part of the ECW show. I mean, it makes sense. The timeline would match up because he debuted in NXT in the summer of 2010 after already being in, in WWE's developmental system or be, you know before that, and they closed down ECW, the WWE version of it. In early 2010. So it would make sense that he would have been a part of that brand before it got shut down. So I did not know that. I don't know where you got that information from. But it sounds, uh, it, it would have been cool. But, um, you know, that now that I think about it, it probably, oh, no, wait a second. You said Paul Heyman to the original ECW. Oh, wait. Oh, the original. Oh, wait, no, I've never heard of that before. I thought you were talking about the WWE version. I thought you were, okay, never mind. I, I completely misread your question. I sound like a fucking idiot. You're talking about the original ECW back in 2001. Was Loki even wrestling back then? I've never even heard that before, so I did not know that. That's crazy. Anyway, next question. Where does The Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels of WrestleMania 25 rank among the best WrestleMania matches to you? To me, it's obviously number one. I mean, that's the greatest match in WrestleMania history. I've said it then. I'm saying it now. Made a list yesterday with Randy on the show. It is the greatest WrestleMania match ever, and no one can argue otherwise, in my opinion. We've watched the match, Alexis, before. I know it was a while ago. You probably don't really remember it. Um, Is that the Heaven and Hell match? The Heaven and Hell match where Taker came from underneath the stage and Sean came out in the white from heaven, Um, quote-unquote. Yeah, I saw... This guy I follow on Instagram, the wrestling classic, like all, a lot of the superstars follow him, like Aleister Black, Ronda, Rousey. Um, he posted a, like a video of their entrances yesterday. Was was that like a like an anniversary or something like yesterday or the day before or something? Um, yeah, I'm not sure when it was. The anniversary, I think, was like last week. Now that you said that, I'm going to look it up while we're here on the show. Let me see. Um, but go ahead. No, I, I really liked that match. Like, I, I remember that match. And I really enjoyed it. I I was thinking yesterday when I saw the entrances, I'm like, that's something I could show to just some random person, and they would think that's really sick. Like, I was imagining you when I was watching the, the videos yesterday, I was imagining you showing them to, like, like your mom or something, and and being, like, like showing, like, showing her a bunch of things and telling her why you like wrestling or how to introduce someone 
to wrestling, that's one of the matches you would show them. Yeah, I think you hit the nail right on the head there. I've said that before. People have asked me, what matches would you show someone who isn't familiar with wrestling to introduce them to wrestling? And this would be that match, or one of the matches mm-hmm. anyway. Because it's a, yeah. it, the video package is amazing. It's a simple story. Undertaker had never beaten Shawn Michaels before, but he had also never lost at WrestleMania. So something has to give. And then it's like Shawn Michaels, super religious, all about God. Taker's like this phenom from hell. It writes itself. And the guy was still undefeated um, back then. The match was amazing. It just makes sense, you know? You should really do a podcast on, like, wrestling matches or wrestling, like, like clips from wrestling shows to show, like, a playlist to show somebody who doesn't watch wrestling but wants to. Yeah, that, that's tough, but I would have to come up with, you know, a list. Um, yeah, and that would definitely be one of the matches. I, I, I've answered this question before on the show. I don't really remember what else I've said. Probably Punk and Cena, too, because the crowd was so hot in Chicago that night. Mm-hmm. And, again, it's a simple story. If Punk wins, he leaves with the championship. So it's like, wow, what is this guy going to do? Like, I've told people that weren't fans before about that, and they're like, wow, that's a cool concept, because it's not like, oh, good versus evil. Like, again, that's a simple story, but it's not that creative when you see it in every match ever. So, yeah. Punk and Cena would be another one. Michaels and Shawn. Um, probably something with Hogan or Rock. You know, a match that people know. Or with, with with people that, you know, outside fans would know. Something like that. But uh, this would, I would be splice that. In, um, I, w- I would splice in some NXT stuff, too. Like uh, like Keith Lee and Dijakovic's feud. Yeah, stuff like that. I think NXT, I've said this before, too. I think if there's any show that I would not be embarrassed to watch in front of someone else, it would probably be NXT. Dynamite's good too, but like, when we watched, I don't know, what is it? I think it was Fighter Fest. We watched that here at my house, and like, my family was around, yeah. and like, Nakazawa pulled out his fucking thong, I'm like, ugh. Like, I mean, I thought it was funny, but like, showing this to someone who's not a fan, it's like, I'm embarrassed right now. Or like... Yeah, that and like, Raw from like a year ago. Or like... I mean, Raw now isn't amazing. It's it's very good. But, like, there's some segments they do to, like, why are they doing this? Like, this attempt at comedy is terrible. Like, SmackDown. The fucking dog yeah. food shit. Like, ugh. I hope, like, no. that, it's embarrassing that it's on Fox and that more people see it now. It's cool that they're on a bigger platform to show people, like, oh, we have wrestling now. The show sucks. So, like, it's it's terrible. I mean, I wish it was, like, NXT on Fox and they could show people some actual good content. But anyway, um, that would be a match going back to Taker and Sean. Amazing match. The anniversary is on April 5th, so they were probably just putting it up because it's WrestleMania weekend coming up. But um, oh. yeah, the match is amazing. It's actually, I think, wait, I think, wait a second. Is this the same? I think it's the same calendar year as 2009. It must be because April 5th is this Sunday. Yeah, I guess it is. That's kind of crazy. So yeah, the anniversary of that show is the same day as WrestleMania 36, which is kind of cool. Um, an amazing match. People should absolutely watch it. And uh, I think WWE actually posted it for free on their YouTube. I mean, it's on the network, but they posted it for free on their YouTube channel in full, the whole 30 minute thing on their channel, like yesterday. So again, if people haven't seen it, which if you haven't, what the fuck is wrong with you? Go watch it. It's amazing. Um, at Jeremy eight, nine, 11. Do you think it would be better to pair Austin theory up with Seth Rollins as one of his disciples? You know, that's not a bad idea. I like that idea, but I think it's way too soon for Theory to be getting called up. Like, way yeah. too soon. Like, we know nothing about the guy. He's great in the ring. We know nothing about his character. He's generic heel number five. Like, oh, I'm better than you. I'm, I look better than you. Which is fine for now. And, like, I'm everyone was like that at one point or another. But he's got to be given time to really come into his own as a character. Introducing him from the get-go as... A Rollins disciple is not going to do him any favors. So mm-hmm. I like the idea on paper. If he's still doing the gimmick a year from now, then maybe. But for now, I don't like the idea of Austin Theory permanently joining Raw. Um, your thoughts on that, Alexis, or do you just agree? Um, I agree, but that kind of made me think of like like Seth Rollins could almost be this like cult religious. Leader? Yeah, like a cult. Exactly, like a cult leader. Like this. Oh, I'm God. I'm. I'm the Messiah. I'm here to save everyone. Like, he already is like that, but I think if they added a little bit more of a mystique to him and he could almost, like, get inside some someone's head at, like, NXT and 
and plant the seed, I think that would be really cool. But yeah. Austin Theory, like, Austin Theory needs some work. Yeah, Theory is a good person for that spot more than, like, an Adam Cole who shouldn't be a follower, he should be a leader. Um, yeah. Theory is perfect for this spot. I think it's just too soon. But, yeah, doing mm-hmm. something similar to what Punk did all those years ago as the Street yeah. of Society, I think is. I love the whole Messiah thing. I think it's perfect. And I love that Murphy's with them. And it sucks. I think he got hurt, and one guy from AOP got hurt, too. So it sucks that his stable is apparently no more, at least for right now. But, um, you know, they've done this before where, like, Evolution, for example, they talk about it in the Ruthless Aggression show, Batista and Orton, when they first got recruited into the group, got hurt in the same match. And they were both out for months. So it's like wow. this whole Evolution group is completely down the tubes. And then they both came back and they, you know, they picked up right where they left off with both guys in Evolution. They didn't replace them. They almost did, but they didn't. It's it's all part of the documentary. So what I'm saying is, if that happened with them, I think it can happen with these guys too. As long as they're not out for a year or whatever, you know, I think one of them might be out for a little while. The AOP guy, but you know, they could always pick up where they left off uh, when they're good to go again. Hopefully. Next question from uh, the average grunt. His question was. Hey guys, back on Twitter, at least until the lockdown is over. Got my first question of the new year and new decade. Should time limits be brought back to WWE? I think it would add more drama to the, you know, title matches specifically, but just matches in general. And it would also give them another option for finishes. Yes, I don't know why they haven't done that already. I love the idea of time time limits. And they're doing that. I think they're still doing that in AEW. They did it for a while. I think they're still doing it. Um, no, they're doing that for every single match. I, I, I've noticed that. Every okay, so the, yeah, they do it for every match. They've done a few finishes like that already. They did it with Moxley and Pack on an episode of Dynamite back late last year. They did it with Darby and Cody. And I love. I again, you can't do it every match, obviously, but when done occasionally, it's really a, a smart booking strategy. Mm-hmm. So um, yes, I love that. I mean, yes, them bringing it back now would definitely be them copying AEW. But hey, listen, if it makes sense, it's a good thing to take. So I would absolutely love if they started doing that again. I don't know why they haven't done that already, but they only do it when it when it's convenient for them. But they should be doing it more consistently like AEW is. So uh, any more thoughts on that, Alexis? Um, I think they should only do it for title matches. Okay. I mean, I like doing it for every match because it makes sense. Like, you need to have um, matches have a time limit because it's like, oh, in theory, in Austin theory, you could have matches uh, go three hours. And like, oh, but we still have the rest of this card. You know, in storyline. So I like the idea of every match having it. But in WWE, if yeah. they wanted to do it if they wanted to do it occasionally, I mean, no one really thinks that much about it. But I'm just saying in storyline, to me, it would make sense. But at the same time, um, what was they going to say? Uh, at the same time, yes, if WWE did it just for, you know, just for title matches, that would make sense. I agree. So go on. I'm sorry. It, yeah, it makes it feel like bigger uh, a bigger deal. And I, I like when AEW has, like, title matches and they announce who the referee is and they like do the time limit and everything like those make the matches feel like such a big deal when WWE has a title match it's just like yeah it's title match let's do this yeah no exactly absolutely so I think that's a great idea do you know when when WWE does it it's like oh let's do the title match whatever but it does give them another option for example for title matches it's better than oh here's a fucking DQ like dude you know how many times you've seen that? It's so annoying. Or a count out. Yeah. Oh my god. They do that literally at least once or twice a show. Or no contest or something. AEW has done it maybe once. A DQ, they, I know they've only done once. Yeah, they've only had one DQ. I feel like they've done maybe a non-finish before. Like, um... Like maybe twice, maybe? They've done a few time limit draws. I don't know if they've ever done a like a, a match that doesn't have a finish is what I'm saying. I don't know if they've done that at all. I'm not really sure. I know NXT has. I don't think I don't think AEW has. But anyway, um, yeah, I think it's a good thing for WWE to do, and hopefully they do it at some point. But it's been so long, I don't think they will. But they should probably realize, hey, it worked for them. It, it's working for the opposition. Hey, we should probably do it too. Um, next question. We'll finish off here with three questions from John Ritland at Reborn again from the Twitter machine. Check hey! out his awesome show on YouTube, Real Honesty with John Ritland. He's great. His first question was, will WrestleMania be a fun mess or a complete dumpster fire? Alexis, you're starting off. <laughs> um, I don't know, actually. I'm not really looking forward to the show that much, um, except for Rhea Ripley and Drew and Edge and Orton, but I don't know. I think this 
all of us are in this together. Like we're all sitting, we're all going to be sitting at home. We all aren't working. Um, I mean, I took the evening off. I took the day off, but it just, it depends on what they choose to do. If they choose to like play to the fans, then I guess it's going to be good. If not, then total dumpster fire and throw the dumpster away. So (laughs) who knows? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I think it could very well, it could very well go either way. Yeah. It has the potential to be a fun mess, but it also has the potential to be a dumpster fire. So I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to suck. I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to be amazing. But I will say I'm looking forward to it. I'm op, you know, cautiously optimistic, might be the right words to use there, that I think they can pull off a good show in this environment because they proved, and they can't do this with WrestleMania, that they can put on a good show with the last couple Raws. The 316 one was a complete... I mean, I wasn't. I didn't like that show at all. But the last two. Oh Raws, my god, that one was so bad. That was bad. They didn't really find their footing yet. I mean, it's not like oh, they magically turned a corner. I mean, SmackDown is still deplorable. Raw is actually very good. Though. I really like Monday's Raw. The promos have been phenomenal. Like they've mm-hmm. been some of the best promo work I've heard in a long time on any WWE show. So it, it does have you know its positives. Obviously, I'm not going to sit here and say oh, every Raw should be in an empty arena with no crowd because it gives us this. Like obviously, like. That's not the, I mean, one positive compared to a million negatives isn't really, you know, overwhelming. But um, still, I think it could be good. I think if I had to choose, I think it'll be a fun mess, but that's the optimist in me speaking. It could very well be a dumpster fire, so we'll see. We'll, we'll be in this together, though. If we're going to, if it's going to be bad, we can all shit on it together on, on Twitter and whatnot. So either way, mm-hmm. it's going to be a fun time. Next yeah, question. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you agree as well? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Second question. Second to last question here from John. Uh, non wrestling related. This is a very good question. I don't know if you saw this. You probably did. Non wrestling related. But could you see more movie studios going the streaming route when they even even when theaters reopen, aka charging fourteen ninety nine or nineteen ninety nine a pop for full price new movies? Um, that's a great question. It's definitely possible, but I say no. Because I was thinking about this, and a lot of people are saying, for example, why don't they put the Black Widow movie that was supposed to come out in May on Disney Plus? Because they would be losing hundreds of millions of dollars if they did that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's just not the same. It's not the same. I am surprised that movie theaters are honestly still around. I mean, they're not doing amazingly well. But they are still doing well enough that, I mean, the fucking Avengers movie is the highest grossing movie of all time. And it was 2019. So people are still going to the movies for good movies. It's not like the movies are dead. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. people are still going to see shit. But um, at the same time, charging the movies to watch at home, yeah, it makes sense. But then you're not going to the theater and buying food because that's part of it. That's how they make their money. And if they don't have that, then they're just going completely out of business because why else would you go? Um, mm-hmm. so again, I, I, I like that as an idea and yeah, char- charging fourteen ninety nine or nineteen ninety nine. But part of the thing is too, for some people, I'm not saying everybody, at least for me and probably you too, there is a, there, it's fun to leave and go actually go do something and not just watch a movie from your house that I could do anyway. You know, yeah. I mean, I think it's part of the It feels like experience. a bigger deal when I'm going to a movie theater. I know. Yeah. I mean, just buying it for 20 bucks. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that, but I could see a lot of people doing that because they don't have to leave their house. And I'm, trust me, I'm the first person to not want, not to want to leave my house. I get it. But like, I don't know, to pay 20 bucks for it when I could just pay half that to go see it on a Tuesday or even a quarter of that on a Tuesday in a, in a more, you know, eccentric environment, I guess might be the right word to use. Um, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of that. Could I see it happening? Sure. At some point, I think it's inevitable. Um, I think the coronavirus will take its toll, uh, definitely on private movie theaters or, you know, whatever, not, not chains and whatever, cause they can, uh, they could take the loss, but, um, it's, it's a very interesting question. So, uh, your thoughts on the whole thing, Alexis? Is he talking about movie theater tickets? Like what, what is he talking about charging $20 or $15? Yeah. It's like, okay. So... Black Widow comes out on, you can watch it on Xfinity, 20 bucks. Comes out May 1st, you don't have to wait two months to watch it on On Demand. You can watch it on May 1st at your house, but you have to buy it for 20 bucks to watch it once, you know. But I also think too, oh. I think part of the problem with that, another reason why they would never do that, is because it's so easily, like, you could just record it from your home. Like everyone, I mean, it's illegal to like, you know, bring cameras into movie theaters and whatever, you could just watch it. You could just record the movie and then have it and then own it. 
I, and that's another reason um, why they would never do that. I just thought of that I, right now. I also think they wouldn't do that because movies and like streaming services are making bank right now because everyone's home. So I don't think they have any reason to up any prices because, I mean, I'm the last person to talk about finance, but I don't know if this sounds right. Laugh at me if I'm wrong, but their stocks are up or something probably. But because a lot of people are watching movies right now. So I don't know. I, I don't think they have a reason to up any prices. No, yeah, I don't think so. At least not right now. But um, yeah, it's it's an interesting theory. It's an interesting Austin theory. Stop. But, um, it, listen, John <laughs> Ritlin would like the fucking pun. All right, he would like that pun, and I know he'll appreciate John, it. John, John, when you when you listen to this, please tweet me a pun. Oh goodness. Um. Anyway, so yeah, no, no, I think it's an interesting theory, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, at least not anytime soon, because there's a lot of like issues with that. I think logistically. Last question of the day. So I've rewatched some older Manias, and some of them have held up surprisingly well, while others have not. My question is about main events. What five Mania main events have aged well, and what five have not? So this is more for me. This is a lot like RJ's question to kind of go full circle here in terms of content that's aged well or not as it has not aged well. Main events specifically... There's not a lot of matches I'll say, oh my god, I thought that was shit at the time, and I rewatched and I thought it was great. A lot of the things are still as good or as, as bad as I remember them. For example, for as good, I rewatched the WrestleMania 26 show from, uh, WrestleMania 26 show from 10 years ago, uh, last weekend, on the 10-year anniversary. And that main event of Taker and Shawn Michaels 2, when Shawn Michaels retired, was, was still as good now as it was back then. So that's held up fairly well. Um, the... Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Chris Benoit match, I can't say his name, just kidding. It's an amazing match. Uh, it's from WrestleMania 20. That's still a great match all these years later. Um, Hogan and Warrior from actually 30 years ago today is still a great match from April 1st, 1986. Great match. Um, matches that, you know, that haven't really held up as well. Or, I mean, I only named three there. For matches that still are very good, Brian Batista and Randy Orton from WrestleMania 30. Still a great match. Brock and Roman from WrestleMania 31. Still a great match. Um, matches that really haven't held up well. Rock and Cena was a shit show. Uh, the second one. The first one I thought was good. The second one was like a fucking video game. Oh, reversal, reversal, reversal. Like, oh my god. It was, having, <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, that was bad. Triple H, Randy Orton, WrestleMania 25. Still as underwhelming watching it back as it was 10 years ago. 10, 11 years ago at this point. Just was, I mean, Shawn Michaels and Taker was so good, nothing was going to top that. And that match was so mediocre. Um, it's okay. My phone my phone dropped. I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. It sounded like the Let whole house. Let me pick it up. <laughs> Jesus. I love um, how you're just going on like nothing happened. Hey, that, 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 that's show business. And unless I hear a gunshot, then I'm, I'm kind of legally uh, required to stop the podcast. Otherwise, the show must go on. <laughs> I would hope on. you're stopping the podcast. Yeah, I would hope. For anyone else, probably not. But for you, of course I would. Um, Aww. Yokozuna versus Bret Hart. WrestleMania 9 is still not good at all. Um, and I love Bret Hart, but like that match sucked. Um, uh, Lawrence Taylor, the football player, versus Bam Bam Bigelow from WrestleMania 11 from our native Hartford, Connecticut. A fucking shit show. Um, <laughs> we have the... You know, we are we are, have that distinct honor of holding one of the worst WrestleManias of all time here in Connecticut. So I guess we're no, we're known for something at, at the. Uh, Represent. I think it was at the, was it New Haven? I think it was New Haven. I want to say Hartford, but I'm pretty sure it was New Haven at the old New Haven Coliseum. Anyway, so that match sucked. That show sucked too. Um, the first ever Mania main event, not that good. Hulk Hogan, Mr. T versus Paul Orndorff and Roddy Piper. I mean, for historical purposes. You know, people should watch it. First ever WrestleMania main event. But the match still... It's not good. It's not good. 35 years later, it's its not a good match. Um, and then the main event of WrestleMania 2000 from 20 years ago. Um, Triple H, The Rock, Big Show, and Mick Foley. Also, not that good of a match. Um, so, yeah, for matches that are still good, I already kind of talked about those. Um, well, actually, again, you can't really answer this question. You really haven't seen most of those matches. Um, and we watched a bunch of them last year that you don't really remember. Like, we watched Brock and Roman where Rollins cashed in. That was still really good years later. We watched, we watched Shawn Michaels and Taker, the second one, where Shawn Michaels mm -hmm. lost and retired. We watched Brian one where he won the title. Um, 
I don't think we watched the main events of the other ones because there there really have not been a lot of good main events in recent years. Because the ones in the you said from ten, his question was say from any mania ten years or older. I named a lot from recent years, and I named a lot from older years too. Um, but from the ones from re- recent years, thirty one and thirty had two great main events. Thirty two. Did you? Mm, oh no, you didn't watch the. They aired on SmackDown last week. It was Triple H and Roman Reigns. It sucked. The match sucked. It was as boring. I saw people like defending it, like, "Oh, it's." Can we pretend it wasn't as bad? No, it, it sucked. Let's let's stop pretending it was good. People, it, it sucked. Um, Thirty three Taker and Roman. I was there. I liked it at the time a little bit, but watching it back, yeah, it sucked. Thirty four Brock and Roman. Watched the back yesterday or on Monday. That sucked too. And then. People want to poop on Becky, Ronda, and Charlotte, but I thought it was a good match. Was it the Mania main event that we all thought it would be? Not really, but um, it was still a good match. And I, and I think, it, I think it, you know, I think it's, at, I think that's a match that's not as bad as people were making it out to be now or even then. So again, you haven't really seen most of the other matches, but any matches, Mania main events that you know of, or specifically that we kind of already talked about from last year that you saw, does it hold up a year or so later? Um, well, we already talked about the main event from last year. Yeah. Um, that one was like, when I watched it, I was just like, really? Like, like, really? Did you really have to end it like that? Mm-hmm. Like, you've been building up Rhonda for so long, and she's really talented, she's really good. You have Becky beat her. Okay, fine. That makes sense. But, like, really? She technically never beat her then. Then why is she cha- she's not champion? Yeah, exactly. There's no, Ra- there's no Raw champion. No Raw Women's champion. I mean, it'll make sense when Ronda comes back and, you know, she's like, you never beat me and blah, blah, blah. But that hasn't do you really happened think yet. They would, do you really think they would go back to that? I don't. Oh, 100%. They would absolutely bring that up. Like, you never beat me, bitch. Like, you barely got me. So, yeah, they would definitely bring that up. But she hasn't been back yet, so, you know. Um, I don't know. Yeah, they haven't done it. Um, Yeah, I can't really think of anything because I I have a bad memory now. Um, so can't remember. Um, well, what we got, I know, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I watched your live stream and I, I, you know, I was in it because I have to always be relevant. Of course. Um, yeah, of course. Duh. And, uh, you know, that, that sounded good. I didn't watch it, but it sounded good. <laughs> I don't really have a lot to talk about here because I didn't really watch it, but yeah, no, it was still a good match. It sounded good. I mean, we watched it last year, but yeah, that's a match that was really good. Um, Fuck, what was I going to say? Oh, so we watched the best Mania matches last year before we went last year. I mean, it's too late now because we're a couple days out from the show. But what we should do at some point is watch the worst matches in the show's history and just discuss how fucking terrible they are. And there's a lot of them. John Ritler yes, knows please. this. There's a lot of bad ones. We watched all the good ones, so it's not it's it's time to watch the opposite and rewatch all the bad ones. So we'll do that at some point, but... uh. Yeah, great question from uh, John Ritland. A lot of great questions here today for episode 331 episode of Hashtag Ask Jesus. I'm here on April Fool's. No joke for you. Um, we're, we're already going through enough bad times right now, so I feel like it'd be kind of shitty to do that. So um, I would say we're going to WrestleMania, but no one is. So it's, uh, you know, it's comical. What What isn't a joke, though, is that we are going to WrestleMania, hopefully, next year in Los Angeles. And I say hopefully because hopefully this shit blows over by then. I'm sure it will. I mean, we, we're pretty positive that it will. But... You never know. The world's a weird place right now. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, this was great. Alexis, thank you for joining me. Hopefully we can have you back on at some point in the near future. Cheap plug real quick before I let you, uh, you know, speak your piece. Wrestle Rant Radio tomorrow. A uh, bit of an advertisement for that. You and I, as well as RJ, Mr. Marceau, discussing all things WrestleMania 36. It's going to be a loaded preview prediction show, so people tune into that on nextairwrestling.net, Stitcher, uh, you know, Spotify, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Google Play. We're all over the place, so find the show, rate the show, subscribe to the show, and listen to that episode tomorrow for a loaded preview episode prediction panel for WrestleMania 36. But again, Alexis, this has been great. Thanks for joining me. Of course. Anytime. Any parting <laughs> words for the YouTube audience there? Um, see you guys never, because we're all in quarantine. Here's four words for you. Wash your fucking hands. And I say that every week <laughs> now, but, uh, you know, stay safe, wash your hands, like the video, more importantly, and uh, drop a comment, share the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll be back next week with our post-WrestleMania edition of Hashtag AskGSM. Until then, guys, enjoy WrestleMania week, and I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road to WrestleMania. <laughs>